What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Kane in 2003 was pure evil. <laughs> if you know the reference, you're cultured. Um, by uh wrestling gift, shout out to the homie man. I had to check this one out as soon as I saw that he dropped this. I was like, Yeah, this has gotta be one of my next videos to check out. Kane around this time was on a different level of evil and i love it man he was setting jr on fire he was tombstone pile driving uh linda mcmahon he easily had one of my favorite wrestling theme songs of all time this is the version of kane i appreciate and remember everything after this version don't give a damn about but this version of kane this was perfect i loved it and we're gonna check this out go down Memory lane, man, because this one, y'all know I had to check this out. Y'all, y'all, y'all knew. Y'all knew. We're going to get right into this one. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's do the damn thing. When Kane made his debut in 1997, the wrestling world was introduced to a monster, a seven foot giant who looked like a demon who would walk around killing everyone and everything, from yep. setting his own brother on fire to attacking the entire roster with an iconic mask, the outfit, the theme, the pyro. From yeah. day one, Kane was on another level. And as the years went by and after many special moments, Kane became one of the most beloved wrestlers in the company. And as time went by, he went from trying to kill his brother to teaming up with him, mm -hmm. and he went from being the evil to monster to eventually becoming the big friendly giant of the WWE. By 2003, Kane was out here doing Hulk Hogan impressions, doing the spinner Rooney, being a hungry, hungry hippo. <laughs> Kane slowly became just another regular wrestler. But in 03, that was about to change. The company felt it was time to make Kane Kane again. It was time for the big mm -hmm. red machine to return to his old ways. They wanted Kane to be a savage again. They needed a monster. And in the summer of 03, after all the comedy skits and bits, after becoming just another regular ass wrestler, it was time for all hell to break loose. And I don't think anyone could have predicted how insane things were going to be. And it worked, bro. It worked. It worked because Kane, like he was saying, was becoming more of a... Uh, he was beloved by the fans, but he wasn't taken seriously. Like, he wasn't that menacing Kane that we remember when he first came into WWE. He was more so, um, he was more so just, like, fun-loving. Like, yeah, he'll still beat your ass and chokeslam you and tombstone pile drive you. But people weren't as, I guess you can say, afraid of what he would do. You know what I'm saying? They <clears throat> put him in, like, more of these comedy gimmicks and more of these funny roles rather than oh no kane is here we're all doomed but they changed that once they took the mask off of him and boy they took the mask off of him and added that beautiful theme song theme song to his entrance it was it was over Again. It all began when Kane was standing in the ring on Monday Night Raw in Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. After losing a world title match against Triple H, this was the night where Kane was finally going to take his mask off. The mask he had worn in every single appearance since 1997, the mask That's that was crazy. the identity, the mask that made Kane Kane, was finally coming off. Mm -hmm. and as he stood there with his back turned to the camera with his mask in his hands, one of the most awesome heel runs of all time yeah. officially began. Kane took his mask off, chokeslammed his former friend RVD, did his legendary pose with the most intense pyro we had seen, and Kane was in the cut, and it was a scary sight. No more jokes, the fun and games were over, yeah, and it to was simply over. put it, Kane in 2003 was pure evil. Yes, it was evil! Awesome. Let's get into it. <laughs> Yo, Kane took that mask off and instantly. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that instrumental in the back? Oh, it brings me back. Oh, this is oh, this is so good. Instantly, <laughs> Raw became his show. Raw no oh. longer felt like you were watching a wrestling show. This shit was now a horror movie. Yes. This week on Raw during a world title match between RVD and Triple H, with everyone on the stage fighting and brawling, <laughs> Kane pulled up like he was straight from hell, like the oh, devil spawned himself. God. This man almost became a mass murderer with the fireworks alone, and he showed up for the first time since taking his mask off and he almost blew up everyone on the damn stage all you see is evolution running and crawling for their lives trying to get away as kane walks out looking like <laughs> Hannibal Lecter. one of the coolest visuals you'll ever see in wrestling and this psycho goes to rvd and you're like oh he's about to kill his boy but nah he grabs eric bischoff the yep. general manager of raw and <laughs> choke slams his ass off the stage just killing him leaving him wasted wipe he did kill that nigga, bro. This was fucking great. I fucking love this. This is Kane. 
This is my version of Kane right here. This is the the top epitome. Well, his early years were fucking fantastic. I used to be afraid of him as a kid. But this, what they brought back, but just a little bit more edgier. Oh, this is fantastic. Tipping him out, and the crowd goes crazy. And the show ends with this insane camera shot. Yeah. The shot just zooming into this monster's face. Yeah, and that was. Kind of body, and I was like, yo. This was a good. That was a good camera one shot. Epic good way to camera angle. The character. And this was just the beginning because every week after this, Kane just got crazier and crazier. Mm -hmm. The next episode, I shit you not, throughout the night, there are bodies being found backstage and they all look like violent crime scenes. Tommy Dreamer is dead, Rico is dead, everyone and their mom is dead. And as a result, it was up to Stone Cold Steve Austin Ooh, to confront Kane. And people. as Austin comes out in a good mood and tries to convince Kane that the fans do love him, that he doesn't need to feel ashamed of taking his mask off and that he shouldn't lash out because of it, Kane thinks Austin is laughing at him, and just like that, well, Kane took it personally. Kane starts attacking Stone Cold, and they begin brawling. Mm -hmm. Austin goes off on him. He grabs the chair and proceeds to beat the shit out of Kane. He gives them all the CTE with the chair shot. Kane is busted wide open. He's done. He's laid out. It's a wrap. Nope. But nah. Cause he ain't a wrestler anymore. No. He's a monster. Yeah. Kane sits up like it's 1998 and boom, down goes Austin. It was clear, yo, nobody was safe. There was a killer on the loose <laughs> and the destruction was just beginning. Love it. Because the next week, it was oh. time for a new victim. On the next episode of Raw, it was oh, time man. for Kane to seek professional help. It was time for an intervention oh, and no. poor Jim Ross was put up to the top. Poor JR, bro. He should have known something was up. Look at look at look at the, the gasoline can. I'm doing the interview. You got a gasoline can? What the hell's a gasoline can for? Hey, get me out of here. I'm not doing this. This motherfucker's the range. <laughs> Jim Ross had the unfortunate duty of having to interview Kane, and poor Jim was basically acting as his therapist, trying to once again convince him that people do love him, there's no need to go crazy, and that everything will be okay. Now the question is, did any of that help Kane? No! Of course not. Kane yells, you need to feel my pain. And the same man who brought gasoline to an interview, surprise, yeah. says Jim Ross on fire. <laughs> everyone from Austin to the camera crew to Jim Ross's mom, everyone was begging him not to do it. And burn, baby, burn, Jim Ross is on fire. He was rolling around. All you hear is, ah, ah. And Kane was just there laughing. Totally normal behavior as Jim Ross gets turned into a barbecue on live <laughs> television. At this point, Kane had become an absolute lunatic and nobody was safe and nope. less than a month the company turned Kane from this big friendly giant that we all loved mm -hmm. to this to this sick freak this storyline this character arc was just generational because the next time Kane appeared on Raw he had the most fire entrance yeah. literally of all time Raw came back from commercial break Pyro exploded his banger of a theme played and Kane came See, to see this is why I, I rocks with you know what I gotta go ahead and like the video I'm doing this live I was gonna like it regardless but that's why I rocks with you wrestling gifts. He knows the intro's fire. No pun intended. What are we talking about? It's fucking great. To the ring escorted by a bunch of police officers and in handcuffs and shackles. After weeks of committing atrocities, this is how Kane had to pull up to Raw. And it's just the most badass, one of the coldest things we'd ever seen in wrestling. Mm -hmm. You will be hard pressed to find a better entrance than this. I think the word that kids use these days is aura. And O3 Kane had all of the aura. Kane was being escorted to the ring like he was a mass murderer, and honestly, at this point, he basically was. Yeah. Raw no longer felt like a wrestling show. This was a show that revolved around a psychopath, an unhinged monster, and Raw now felt like a horror movie. From bodies being found around the arena, to nobody being saved, to the legendary entrance, this was different, this was special, and like I said, this was truly generational. Mm -hmm. And of course, that night after being unleashed by the police, he just goes out there and destroys RVD. He takes him to the stage. He throws yeah. him against the stage and almost blows up the stage again. A bunch of referees and agents come out. They try to save RVD. At this point, it's like Kane has a four-star wanted level. The SWAT yeah. team is here. It's getting wild. And it's like, I don't know what the do you think Arn Anderson's gonna do? Because Kane is out here using all the cheat codes. Kane <laughs> score wipes the entire stage and then proceeds to get his hands on Linda yeah. McMahon. Kane grabs a 55 year old lady by her this neck was so and tombstones wild, her on the bro. stage. He just casually tombstones the CEO of the company and stands yep. there and smiles. And that's how Monday Night Raw ended on this hot summer night in the summer of 03. I was like, bro, he is truly unstoppable. 
and I love it. <laughs> Hydra CEO, Hydra Jim Ross, Hydra General oh Manager, my Hydra God. everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, O3 Kane was legendary. Kane in just over a month had turned Monday Night Raw into a horror movie and became one of the best heels we had ever seen, arguably better than his 1997 run. But every movie as we know needs a protagonist, somebody that stands up to evil, somebody that fights mm -hmm. the good fight. But the question was, which idiot was crazy enough to get into <laughs> war with this maniac, with this monster? Well, I present to you Shane McMahon. Yep. Once he tombstoned Linda, the storyline evolved into Linda's one and only son coming back to the company after a two year hiatus to avenge his mom and mm -hmm. take on the demon. And just when things couldn't get crazier and the envelope couldn't get pushed further, these two idiots began to commit war crimes on each other every <laughs> single week. You had a man who had no fear and you had a man who had no problem committing mass murder every week. What could possibly go wrong? Shane came out that first week and he took it to Kane and he even ended up throwing him off the stage. And after that, it was on. They mm -hmm. booked this guy unlike anything we had ever seen before. He gets thrown off the stage and it's like, it's fine, yeah, Shane. I'll see you next week. Because the next week when <laughs> yeah. Kane tries to get his revenge on Shane, he doesn't throw him off a stage. No. He doesn't do a choke slam. No. no, the fun and games are over. He this is what made this work because anything you did to him it didn't matter it's just like he just uh, just sits up and like you know you're fucked right <laughs> to kill laughing. shane mcmahon no like genuinely tries to kill shane mcmahon yo he takes them backstage to this dumpster and all you see is this <laughs> with a bunch of gasoline tanks again just pouring it out casually like everything's fine just another day at the office let me just pour some gasoline in a dumpster and next thing you know there is fire everywhere in the dumpster the dumpster becomes a fire pit and yeah. this crackhead was going to put shade mcmahon yep. into the pit of fire because apparently tombstoning his mom wasn't enough. <laughs> he was going to kill him on live tv and just set him on fire but nah, Shane fights off, and next thing you know, Kane. Kane is the one who gets kicked into the fire, and he just tumbles in, and it's like, yo, what is going on? What kind of wrestling is this? Yeah. Kane basically dies on TV, burned <laughs> alive, and it's like, all right, well, we finally reached a point where someone dies in wrestling. But nah, next week, Kane nope. goes back like he's Michael Myers in Halloween 2, and he pulls up, and he does the unthinkable to Shane. Oh like, as my bad as it God, was setting bro. Jim Ross on fire, as bad as it was this was someone wild. on stage, the worst thing Kane ever oh did my God, was what he bro. did to Shane McMahon. This crackhead, this monster, this just just maniac pulled up to Raw the next week, attacked Shane during a little segment, and he ends up handcuffing Shane McMahon to the ring post. And this guy, this guy, he pulls out jumper cables and a battery. This was and wild. An episode ball. of Raw on what was supposed to be just a nice normal wrestling show, Kane electrocuted Shane's testicles. What the f bro? To this day, this is one of the that's the wildest heel like thing I've we. We've seen damn near in wrestling. Sneaky Kane was different. <laughs> Wildest things we had ever seen and ever will see at a wrestling show. A man getting tied to the ring post, getting his testes fried on live TV. Wild. Imagine being six years old and tuning into wrestling, and this is what you see. All you see is Kane just smiling as he does this. Shane's dying. It is the most random, one of the wildest things ever to happen at wrestling. And you know, honestly, when you see this, you're just like, how? How do you think of this? As the weeks went by, they continued their war crimes. They continued killing each other every single week. One week, Shane would tweak and destroy Kane. One week, Kane would destroy mm -hmm. Shane. Shane was jumping off stages, jumping off top ropes and yep. tables, but yo, it didn't matter. Kane could not be stopped. He couldn't At be one stopped. Point, Shane even threw Kane into a car, put a brick on the uh, gas yep, pedal, I'll and caused Kane to go full speed into a tractor trailer, <laughs> something that would have killed everyone and anyone in the car. But Kane, Kane would just not die. He just kept coming back every single week. It didn't matter. Burn him alive. A this car crash. Crazy. CTE, send him to the hospital. <laughs> every week. It didn't matter. He would just beat up the hospital staff and pull up like nothing happened. Hey, yo, the wild part was none of this seemed cheesy. None of this seemed cringe. Yo, this was terrifying. Like when Kane wakes up in the hospital, that is genuinely terrifying. And after months of all this going down, it all ended with Kane finally destroying Shane in an epic ambulance match mm -hmm. at Survivor Series 03, leaving him a mess and just sending him to the hospital for good. And after all the mayhem, after all the destruction, Kane stood tall and at this point was one of the most overpowered, most evil, most insane, one of the most awesome heels in wrestling history. Mm -hmm. In just five months, Kane went from ha ha ha, I'm Kane, woo, to I'm Kane, I'm gonna kill your whole family. And yeah. to top it all off, the same night he ended his feud with Shane, he ended that night by burying his brother, The Undertaker, alive. 
What a wild ride and what a transition. It came out of nowhere and instantly made Kane awesome again. Once he took off that mask, Raw became a show. He became terrifying again. And every week they were doing things we never thought we would see on a wrestling show. Facts. And it became more than wrestling. Like I said, it really became a crime thriller or like a slasher film. This was Silence of the Lambs meets Halloween meets WWE. And Kane absolutely crushed it. I was just a little too young to watch this live, but I remember watching this stuff on VHS later and watching on YouTube in 05, 06, and 07, and even all those years later, this stuff would creep me the hell out, and I know for <laughs> sure all the kids that were watching during this time, they were definitely left traumatized. I definitely think it's one of the most underrated heel turns and runs of all time in my opinion. He had so much momentum, was red hot literally and at the end of the year it is a shame that he didn't become world heavyweight champion because honestly to cap off his insane second half of the year he no doubt should have been champion yeah it was only right but it never happened and after this kane he was never the same mm -hmm. kane slowly died down and faded into the background and eventually once again became just another wrestler yeah, yeah he was cool in 05 06 07 but it wasn't the same it didn't have that fire but yo, these six months were so legendary and so special. It was unlike anything we had ever seen before or have since. No doubt one of the most evil runs in wrestling history. Kane in Batch. 2003 was the definition of evil and it was awesome. What a time it was to be alive. This is fantastic, down below in the comments. This is fantastic. This brought, memory, brought me down memory lane. Y'all know I love this version of Kane. Y'all know I love his theme music at this time. Y'all know... I love what he was doing, the chaos and carnage he was causing. This was fantastic, man. Comment down below. Let me know. What's your favorite version of Kane? Do you like the Kane who originally came into WWE with the mask on? Do you like the Kane who had to take the mask off? Do you like uh, the Kane uh, that put the mask on and teamed up with Daniel Bryan? Or do you, some people, there are some people, like corporate Kane, which don't know how. Let me know which version of Kane do you guys love the most. If I really had to choose, and this is very, very tough to choose because his first run with the mask on, he scared me as a kid and I loved it. Growing, growing up, I can appreciate how terrifying he was and how menacing he was and iconic that mask was. But at the same time, this version of Kane, the, this version in 03, Kane taking the mask off, Kane going on these psychotic rampages. I really like this one. It's it's really tough for me. If I had to really choose, it's the first version of him, obviously, because it, it sticks with me. And it was so iconic, him showing up or whatnot and feuding with The Undertaker, who at that point, was completely unstoppable then you met someone that was just as more unstoppable it worked and just barely but this version of him i truly truly love and appreciate but i appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm still young speedy youtube wrestling champion world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace